Well, good morning, everybody. The clock on the wall says time uh, for us to get started on our Sunday morning Bible class. Continuing to study about uh, Isaiah in the chapter of Isaiah, <coughs> talking about outers. We've been studying about that the last couple of weeks. God talking to his people about idols, and we, we know one of the main things he tells us not to have them, but Israel was having a problem with it. Chapter, if you, if you want to look in your Bible, be chapter 46. We've been studying before we go any further. All this, the last, this quarter where we started in talking about out. And uh, Colin did a pretty good job on some things that he brought out about the idols and how that they was worshiping them and so when I started last week, <laughs> we've been rotating and teaching Colin and I. So uh, just to continue on, uh, God continued to warn his people about worshiping out. Uh, Israel, all what God had done for, for them in the past, they was trying to be like the nations around them. Some of them didn't want to do it, but it was like if you don't do it, you're going to have problems. So they did what the people around them wanted them to do. Most of them, not all. And always was a remnant that did the right thing and like us today. It always gonna be somebody to do right. It's gonna be somebody to do wrong. That just uh, bottom line. So we got to just learn to deal with that. Verse number one, Baal bow down. Nebo stoop. The idols, their idols were on the beast and on the cattle. Your ca- ca- your carriage were heavy loaded, a burden to weary beasts. And I'm going to stop right there right now. You know, they, he telling them that they bow down. Nebo stoop down. Stoop. Okay, they got the idols. They were putting them on little carts, like we would say, like a little small wagon. We'll use as a little illustration, and and they were pulling them with beasts hooked to them, uh, and 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 they was weighted, they was heavy, and and, and they made the beast pull, them. and 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 they burdened the beast. The beast was weary. You know, I, I don't know a lot of youngsters in here, but most people's forty years old and up know about how your parents had horses and. Some of them had mules, and, and they pulled pliers and whatever else. And, and so I, I got a taste of that. I, I know a little about that. But, you know, as the years went on, they got tractors and everything. We, we, we hardly ever see that today. You see somebody, I know when my children were little, we went, my daddy used to still ply. Even though he had a tractor, he will break up the garden with a horse. He had a horse, and, uh, and he was sunny. He'd get son out and hook him to the plier, and he would break that going up. You know, he had a little going close around the house, but he used a tractor out in the field. But And my children used to love to see him make the horse fly. Sometimes he would set them up on the horse and tell them to hold on to the gear. They, it was just fun to them to sit there and hold on to them. But anyway, uh, going on with the lesson, uh, as we go on, if any question or comment, feel free to raise your hand or make a comment. Verse 2, they stooped, they bowed down together. They could not deliver burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. So, you know, all the ones still, God said here, a lot of them that was uh, making the out of God and stuff, and they were worshiping the God, they went into captivity too. You, you get if you doing something, you praying to something. Your God should sure be able to deliver you, but these gods could not deliver no one. Uh, as we get on the lesson, just going to explain it clearly how what they do. Okay, if anyone would like to read, would you read verse three and four? I, I don't like to do all the talking. Of course, I will if I had to, but I don't like to. Three and four. Yes. Listen to me, O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age I am he, and even to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. Okay. Listen, O house of Jacob. Who are we talking to? Israel. Israel. 
That's right. That's that's who it is. He, you know, he said, you know, I have done this for you. You still don't want to do right. <laughs> you know, in a sense. All the remnant of the house of Israel whom have been upheld by upheld by me from what? From what he 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 upheld, uh, done upheld them from when? From their birth. From the beginning. He been with Israel. They was his people, chosen people. And 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 they still choose to not follow as they should. You know, it just like in a sense, you know, you got a child, you done raised them, you said, boy, girl, you know, boy, you could take care of yourself over that. <laughs> take care of you, you're going to get up, you're going to do this and you do that. You know, because some of y'all, we, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know what some of y'all grown for, know, but I know a little about that. You know, we all go through it in some kind of little phase. If you got children, you had to sort of straight stuff out. God was straightening his children out years from. They was going astray with these out. And he did not like that. So uh, going on, he said, even to your old age, he was with them till they got gray hair. And, and my mom used to, she's sitting out here, and she used to say, you still not no closer to me than the day you were born. Don't care how old you get. And you still got to get that respect. And you might be grown, you might got your own house or out, whatever, but still, I'm still your mom. And God still, our, their God, we're talking about Israel, still Israel God regardless to what they did. And he still wanted them to do right. I have made and I will, del- will bear, even will carry and will deliver you. you no, know, after all this, did they still be rebellious and falling after the hour of God? God said, I'm still going to do for you. How many of us that have children, even though they might do wrong, make them mad sometimes, when they come back and do right, you still say, I'm going to help you? You know, it's, it's like the lesson said. The gods that they were leaning toward worshiping. Mm-hmm. When when a captor came in, they took all those statues. Mm-hmm. They loaded them on carts and they mm-hmm. took them and they melted them down and made them into their gods. Mm-hmm. You know, but, but God is saying, they didn't do that to me. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here. I'm going to stay here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay with you regardless. Mm-hmm. And one thing is, y'all excuse me, I forgot to give the title. Understand the calamity. Uh, anyone, can you tell me what that means? When, when calamity come up on you? Disaster, tragedy. Yeah. Bad. You're in a state of mind where you, you, you press down. You, 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 uh, what you've been doing, the can't, oh, well, you got to face reality now. You, uh, things not the way that you thought it was going to be in your burden now. You've been running around free and you got, you, you, you got burdens now. And it, it's tough on you. And, and that's us sometimes. Sometimes we had to face calamity. You know, we done, God let us go for so long. And then he said, well, enough is enough. He pointed us. <coughs> All right. Verse is uh, five. To whom will you liken? Me and and make equal and compare me that we should be alike. Now you gonna you they gonna make these idols and they gonna compare them to gold. No way, <laughs> no way. And he's gonna explain in the next few verses why ain't no way you can compare them to me because of what what's about to happen. Verse six, they lavish gold out of the bags. And weight weight silver on the scale. They hire a goldsmith, and he make it a gold god. Excuse me. They prostrate themselves. Yea, they worship. Now, lavish gold. This is gold that somebody had had gave honestly and stuff. Folk gave stuff, and they take this gold and they make it. These images out of a uh, lack of free will often somewhat. Uh, 
they, they, they weighed out the, the gold and silver, how much they think it's going to take to make this, this, this guard. And they, and they hired go, a go, goldsmith. That's all like a, what we would call, a, 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 I put it like this, a blacksmith. And uh, he mold these things and make images. And then you want to compare them to me. Goes right back to Mount Sinai. <laughs> there to make us a god. Yeah. Yeah. Mold gone for a while, and they didn't mold it one day, and they they wanted somebody, you know, to somebody to worship, which uh, they have been told the true God to worship. But it, you know, Greg, I'm glad you brought that point out. Sometimes you have a, a leader around you, or people that lead you the right way, and they leave for a while. No sooner you leave, here comes the devil sneak in. You know, you know what happened in your house too, your home, whatever. But that's life. No sooner is uh, uh, somebody, people that doing right, it's already hard enough when you're trying to do the best you can. But no sooner is a righteous man, righteous lady, whatever, gone for a while. Oh, here he come, <laughs> and he he gonna work on us. And, and this is what he was trying to do to guard people back then. It, it was Satan, really, because. Trying to get them to worship other God, turn their back on the true God. Verse 7. Well, I'm, before we get into verse 7, the latter part of verse 6, prostrate. This is like a submitting yourself. You submit yourself to these God. And, and you know better. It's just like a person might be in the, brought up in the church and became a member of the church, and then all of a sudden you're going to leave and, and go worship a, another way and submit yourself to it, and you know better. We, we see it, it happen. God don't want his people to be that way. Verse 7, they bear it on the shoulders. They carry it and set it in place, and it stands. From its place it shall not move, though one cries out to it, yea, it cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Now, you're going to make something, and you're going to worship something, you're going to carry it around. You're going to set it somewhere. it got to be moved from place to place. Wherever you put it, it can't move. That's how it'll go. You know, God can do anything. He can move, he, whatever. But they want to compare the idols to, to, to the real God. And, and, and they have saw these things being made, purchased, and, and still they want to cry out to him, help us, save us. You know, we, we look at this sometimes, but I have seen people worship cars, <laughs> motorbikes. I'm serious. In my, my, my little short lifetime, they put all their emphasis in their car, their houses, their boats. It, you know, anything that they love, they will... I knew one guy would keep his motorcycle in the house. I'm not talking about in the, in the, in the garage. And his wife used to be so mad, but he would bring it inside the house, like in the dining room. They had a double door in the back, and he put so much in that motorcycle. And uh, and I used to I used to ride him when I was a lot younger, and I, I liked them too. But I, it would never like that. <laughs> he he would bring this thing in the house, and she would be so mad, and woo, and he would park it right there in the dining room at night. He wouldn't leave it in the garage or nothing. He's afraid somebody gonna steal it. He had that much tied up in it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just had a little comment. But uh, sometimes we can let our job, you know, yeah. clean up so hard at all. Yeah, that's true. When you can do it and won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Anything, sports, whatever. Yeah. Anything you play. Take, take you away from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything you, you get to care more about than go. Yeah. You become an idol. <clears throat> You know, before we leave this verse, you know, mm -hmm. you go back to uh, the Second Samuel five or First Samuel five, where uh, the children, where uh, the Philistines had taken away the Ark of the Covenant and brought it into the house of their god, the Dagon. Mm -hmm. And while the god, while the covenant was there, remember, God knocked Dagon down. They had to go back in the next morning and set him up. <laughs> the next morning, he fell down. He is all. He can't pieces. get up himself. Yeah, he was all in pieces this time. Yeah, broke. You know, it says they never worshiped Dagon again. 
You know, sometimes God has to teach us a lesson like that and destroy mm -hmm. what we most hold dear to right. make us understand it. We don't, you know, it's not important. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes we have to learn from the school of hard knock. Amen. Okay. Uh, verse 8. Remember this and show yourself, men. Recall to man, oh, your transgress you transgressors. So, transgressing, what that means? Someone going against? Is that what it means? Yes. That's, that's right. And, and uh, it is sin, too. But, you know, going against what's been set up all the, the right way. Okay, verses 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. That's a true state. None like it. He's the beginning and he's the ending. No graven image, whether they wood, uh, mold with, with, uh, and pole silver and gold over. He has said they can't move. You had to take it around and put it on something, carry it from place to place. It can't get in the wagon or off the wagon by itself. It can't make rain nor seize rain. Cannot save nor deliver, and they carry it around and worship it. We, we remember, you know, from Moses, the children of Israel, and when God had had the snakes, and they had a lot of those guys could do miracles. They made little snakes too, but the snake that Moses put his rod down, and his rod eight days up. Now, who was the best? <laughs> so, God is forever. There's none like it, and there will be. Verse 10, declare the end from the beginning and from ancient time, ancient time that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pledges. He's going to stand. Whatever he want to do or set out to do, He's going to do it. And he mentioned in ancient times, he had told them before that this, this is what he's going to do. And, it, and, and it's not going to be stopped. Whatever the Lord says is going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. It might take longer than we think it would take, but he said one day is like a thousand years to him. So our, our time, not his time. Or his time is not our time. Maybe I should put it like that. He come when he feels that he should come. And a lot of times we be burden and the stress about problems and wonder why it's taking the Lord so long or whatever. Come see about me. Uh, you, you need to intervene uh, and whatever, but he got his own time frame. He do it at the right time and on time. We've been studying the book of Psalms for about two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, the, that's the psalmist. You know, Lord, come now. Come mm -hmm. help us out now. What you waiting on? You know, yeah. and, you know like I said, he, he has his time schedule. He's going to keep. And we just have to live within that. Mm -hmm. and understand. And a lot of times, we could put up with more, bear more than we think we could bear. Oh, yeah. You know, because God let us do it now. Not, not, not of our own, but right. a lot of times, just because we go through a little turmoil or trial, we think, oh, me, whoa, me. Mm -hmm. But you're a lot tougher than you think you are. Amen. All right. Once again, in John 10, he's, he's reemphasizing that he is he is God. He says it, you know, repeatedly, I am God. And he also says he's the he's the God of old, declaring the end from the beginning. He's the same God here that he was in Genesis 1. He is that one true God. Yeah. Same one. That's why I set up at verses 8 and 9. Remember. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. Recall. <laughs> God would have to keep saying that over and over and over. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how weak human beings are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're you, you right. Have to say it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm still going to use the illustration of children sometimes. How many times parents or something had to tell their children, don't do this? Uh, why are you doing this? I, I told you before. And now, I, I'm going to say this. My dad did. But he, did, he was a good person. He was saying, I'm going to tell you one time. And do, do you understand it? Now, one thing about it, he said, do you understand what I'm saying? 
And if you you if you don't understand what he said after he told you, and you you do it again, you will understand. And that's one thing he would tell you. Now, and that, he said, I want you to be sure you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, and he he meant that too. <laughs> but we are uh, and people, you know, fall short. A lot of time when we should, uh, we should be better than what we are. But we human beings, and, and God know our heart, and He always will be there for us as He, he was for Israel back during that time. Now He wasn't pleased when they didn't do right, just like He's not pleased with us right. when we don't do right. right. But He will make a way for us, gate, and He will take you back, and you come back and say, "I'm sorry." Amen. He will do that. If you sincere. Uh, and sometimes people have told me, and I don't say it to myself sometimes, well, you know, so and so they keep doing this, this over and over again. You know, you get tired. You know, but it, it's not for us to make that judgment. You know, we might make the judgment, a right to judgment, what this person doing might lead them into a certain situation, but God said, as often as they come and ask, forgive them. So we had to be. A type of people to realize that why they might be doing this, they keep doing something sometime, it might be the state that they are in and they might not quite understand. And then I've seen people for so long live such a way you might want to think never. And all of a sudden they get baptized and, and, and live a Christian life. You know, it, it was a lady over there which I, uh, he's an old man, they used to Joke me about him. He's not my dad, but he he name old man. They, we call him old man Wiley. When I first started going to Ten Avenue over there, first obeyed the gospel. I mean, for years he came to church. He was an older guy, and he had married a younger woman than he was. I, I guess the age span. I, don't, I almost guessed about 15, 20 years, but I might be wrong with that. But she was a lot younger than he was. But he came to church faithfully. But his wife was not a Christian. She would come sometime. A lot of times you didn't see her. But, you know, when that man died, she obeyed the gospel. And further as I know, she's still living faithful. And, and, but she would not obey gospel when he was living. She would come to church a lot of times with him and everything. But I just thought she was a member of the church. And they told me, no, she's not a member. She had never obeyed. But, but he died. And I think within uh, three or four months when he died, she obeyed the gospel. Mm -hmm. And, and came back to the subject of the lesson, mm -hmm. calamity. Mm -hmm. A calamity of some sort will either turn you totally away from God or pull you back toward God. Mm -hmm. One of the two things is usually going to happen. Right. You yeah. know, it's told about Darwin. That's what pushed him over the edge when uh, his daughter had a terrible disease and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, it was uncurable. And when she died, that's when he gave up on God. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Wrong choice, but you know, you're right. They, you make a choice either way you go. Well, actually, here's another example. Mm -hmm. uh, Raccoon John Smith, preacher from Restoration Movement. Uh, that's what changed him. That's what brought him to the church because his kids died in a fire when he was living in North Alabama. And then he was a Baptist, Calvinist doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, their doctrine was, you know, unless uh, that children were born darkened in sin, you know, so mm -hmm. unless they have a response, you know, they're, they're going to go to hell. He couldn't accept that. Mm -hmm. So when his children got what brought him, just really searching out the truth. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah. like I said, calamity is going to go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 11. Calling a bird a prey from the east. The man who executed my counsel from a far country, indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it I will also do it so there you go he's going on and tell you what what, what he's going to do if he, if he says he's going to do it he's going to do it plain and simple you know when we don't know but he will just like he said he's coming back he's coming back and we're going to meet him in the cloud in the sky if you're, you're ready and you're right you, he's going to call us up when he's coming back Nobody know. Even the sons right there with him don't know. The father gonna tell him that, you know, I get let go get him. 
<laughs> you know, he don't he don't know. So we just had to live and do the best we can. And so but this is a great lesson we've been studying about the idols and how that peoples of God, you know, they get weary. Things not going their way sometime and they uh choose to go the other way or choose to go the other way because of their surroundings or uh, whatever. So I have heard that, Greg, since you said that about the movement, the guy used to be a Baptist preacher or whatever, and he became a Christian. I have heard people say before, how can God let this happen, let, let children get killed or whatever? Or why? What kind of God let that happen? He's a true and loving God. Maybe he let that happen to make them better. You know, I don't know. You know, he created everybody, and he's over everything and in control. He knows what he's doing. I, I don't know. You know, first of all, we got to remember God didn't want it for us that way. Yeah. We messed up. Yeah. Like In the beginning, know. way back. You had, well, our ancient forefathers had a chance to make it better, and they chose the wrong path. When I hold a funeral, that's something I, I state every time. God, it wasn't God's plan for us to be here for that. Mm -hmm. That's what they planned. Mm -hmm. God didn't plan for us to be here for that. Man messed up. Brought sin. Brought sin. Brought death. He didn't want that for us. He wanted us to have everlasting life. He could have been the garden of Eden. <laughs> but we're here. Down here. Okay. You know, you know someone had probably, uh, stated, you know, that Adam and Eve had to sin. Adam and Eve didn't have to sin. No. Nah. They didn't have to. They made a choice. And the choice was uh, not good. <laughs> okay. Any more questions coming? If not, we're going to enter into chapter 48, uh, <coughs> verse 1, chapter 48. I hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel, and have come forth from the well springs of Judah, who swears by the name of the Lord. And make mention of God of Israel, but not in truth or in righteousness. Well, there we go again. God talking about his people. He wants them to hear. And he's telling us here, well, that's, that's what uh, Jacob is called Israel. Uh, he called them for from the well springs of Judah. Does anybody know what a well spring is? Our tea and fountain, what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 That was great. It's an artesian water. Well, that flows all the time. It just it, it, you know, I, it used to be one back down the road years ago. And I, I drove down there a couple of years ago to see if it's still flowing. It, it's not flowing now. It's growing up around there. But we should go down there and get water. It's catching. But uh, since I've been working for the bread company, I, I go through. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, between Ewan and Sullivan. They got several now. And I was amazed. I hadn't saw one in years. And, you know, they used to have one post park years ago. And I don't know. They did away with it or they cut it off or it stopped flowing. But, uh, and I stopped and got me some water. I said, I want to taste it. I hadn't tasted none in so long. And, but it's amazing. It's two places I go through, and they, people just be out there just filling up with the jugs. I'm talking about and gallons of water. You know, and, and this is something I hadn't sought in years. And, and so, but. It seems like every community has one, too. Yeah, back during the day, but you, you rarely see them now. And stuff, and I remember when we was coming up, and we used to had to go down to Handsome Farm and work, and <laughs> and we just stop down there and get water because we go right back and everything. Okay. So God continued to, uh, to talk to His peoples here that He made. So you are other word. Go back. Let me bag up. Who swears by? The name of the Lord. He said, you all swear by the name of the Lord. You. And, and make mention of God 
of the Israel, but not in truth or righteousness. So what do you mean there? You are my people. You, you're supposed to be the chosen ones, but you know you just ain't doing quite right all the time. You, you know. Kind of like these denominations, they say God, but they don't work. Mm -hmm. You're saying one thing and doing something else. Yeah. And so, you are out of all peoples, all of the, the standard. That's pretty much what he's saying here. You know, you all ought to be a lot better. For they call themselves after the holy city and lean on God of Israel, the God of hosts is his name. So, if you're going to call yourself a holy city, which I it mentioned uh, someone, I can't remember who said it. Maybe you, Brother Johnson, said that uh, this is called a godly nation, the United States. Of course, we hear it all the time, but we know not truly. They, they will give you the right to worship as you please, but that don't mean it's a godly nation. Because we see so many things happen and goes on in our government allow a lot of it to go on because they pass laws so it, it can be done and, 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 and stuff and so it makes things a lot harder for the ones that are trying to do right. Now, but I, 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 I do like the United States as having freedom because you didn't have that freedom as some other countries you might not, we might not have this opportunity to be sitting here this morning and standing here. So right. that's one thing I do like about the United States. Amen. I like a lot of things about it. But, you know, we do have the freedom. They, they give you, you the choice. You can go and worship where you want and as you please. But the choice you make is going to be your own. If that's the choice you're going to have to deal with God about, or God going to deal with you about. So, so that, that is a good thing. Verse 3. I have declared the former thing from the beginning. They went forth from my mouth, and I caused them to hear it. Suddenly, I did them, and they come to pass. So, pretty much it's plain, simple. The Lord said what he said, and it came to pass. And uh, the former thing. So, There's, there's nothing better than the, us to keep on looking in the Word of God and studying, and that we won't make the same mistake they made back then. You, you know, and this that's what it's written for our learning. The Scripture says that, and we study and we see what happened back then. We should be a better people. Shouldn't make those same mistakes. Mm -hmm. All right. Would someone like to read the last two verses for us, please? Because I knew that thou art an obstinate, and that thy neck is an iron chenew, and thy brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee, lest thou should, uh, shouldest say, My idol hath done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. Okay. Now, I looked, I looked that word up and I said, I wasn't going to write it down. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get so I can hold things in my head all the time. But then, <laughs> often there, I had looked the meaning up and I, my mind went blank right now on it. I had looked the meaning up. I, I usually have a little tab. I've been wrote stuff down. I thought, I'm going to try to get so I can remember stuff. Instead of, this when you be up here, you can recall it. But pretty much, anybody, anybody know what that means? I, I knew. Stubborn. Stubborn. Yeah. And, and, it, and it goes on, and I, I know it. it's talking about the stiff neck right on, but you know, we have, you know, when, when God talking about stiff neck, you have uh, the gospel been put out there. You know what you're supposed to be doing, but you're hard headed. I, I just use that thing. We use. Uh, Hard head instead of stiff neck. The Lord used to use stiff neck in the scriptures a lot of time. He does that. Or uh, 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 yeah, I am you. But when you hard headed and stiff neck, you know you won't turn. You, you know the right way, but you somebody got a stiff neck. You know you can't turn them. They they they, they want to go the way they want to go. And so that's how his people did. Uh, Judah was. 
and uh, and it was like iron and and a bronze and both. You, you know, so when you, it's hard to turn iron. Don't you know that you had to heat it up, get it heated. You know, if you want to bend it right. Now you can bend it other way, but it's still hard. You had to put the heat to, and that's what God had to do to us sometimes. Put the heat to us. <laughs> and so we would do right. Uh, any other question or comments? Are we getting about at the end here? Any other question or comment? Okay. There's a beautiful thing in the lesson that says, God says, I carried you and you're carrying your idols. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow. You know, that, we all understand that. Even today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, that's human nature, you know, they want what they want. <laughs>